Ezard Charles was a natural middleweight. However, knowing he would not be given a fair shot at the title in that weight class, he moved up. Way up. Eventually taking the heavyweight championship and defending it against some of the greatest boxers in history. There's a reason so many put him near the top of all-time pound-for-pound rankings. When watching Charles dominate an opponent, the thing that really stands out is his wild, intercepting counters. Intercepting counters are naturally more dangerous than return counters as you must evade an opponent's attack while throwing your own. But Charles actually took this one step further. Normally, intercepting counters work by beating a wider punch with a tighter punch. This is because, all other things being equal, the tighter, straighter punch will always reach the target first, as it takes a shorter path. But Charles often disregarded all of this, instead beating an opponent's power punch with an even bigger, wider power punch. This really shouldn't work, but Charles made it work. In order to do this, he used a number of incredibly brilliant and extremely dangerous tactics. So in this breakdown, we'll look at how Charles landed knockouts by moving directly into the line of fire. Most fighters defend hook punches by either blocking them, weaving underneath of them, or simply retreating. But Charles liked to stay in range and use lateral footwork and head movement instead. Meaning that Charles would either move deep inside in the same direction as his opponent's hook, or move outside directly into it. Both these methods are kind of insane, but as the old saying goes, no risk, no reward. By moving with his opponent's lead hook, Charles could create a superior inside angle from which to land his own lead hook. This same inside position worked just as well for evading jabs and helped to align his rear hand down the middle. Also, if Charles did get caught, which he sometimes did, at least he was moving with his opponent's punch, dispelling some of the force. The same could not be said for when Charles moved towards an opponent's lead hook, as he did in his incredible knockdown of Jersey Joe Walcott. In that instance, Charles actually sidestepped and pull slipped to the right, barely beating Walcott's left and getting out of the way just in time. This was essentially that scene from Indiana Jones where he just barely makes it underneath the wall before it comes down. But this tactic left Charles in the perfect outside angle to intercept with his own left, allowing Walcott to drive himself into his fist. Many years later, Ali would use the same technique to help negate Frazier's lead hooks in their second fight. And I would put Ali and Charles among the very small list of fighters who could use this tactic with any consistency and still remain conscious. Continuing the theme of living dangerously, Charles would often move towards an opponent's cross as well. This created such a deep angle that he could slip past their cross while throwing his own down the middle. He was basically crossing a cross. This technique isn't as dangerous or unusual, but it will still get you knocked out if you don't execute it with absolutely perfect timing. Charles' ability to set up these counters, and many more traditional, less dangerous counters, really came down to his unique form of distance management. In fact, I'm going to make the bold claim that if you want to be a great counterpuncher, mastering these upcoming tactics will put you well above most of your competition. Charles had three very powerful ways of manipulating distance to set up his counters. The first was to rhythmically retreat, staying just out of range to entice opponents to chase him. Then he would stop short and drive them into a hard counter. The second tactic expanded on the first tactic in a more aggressive way. Charles would attack first to draw a counter, then fade back. From there, he could counter the counter. This method was later used extensively by Evander Holyfield. The third method was to stay in range and counter using a split step. 
Charles would suddenly jump to widen his stance before pushing off his back foot. The split step is a great way to gain a lot of momentum very quickly, and Charles would slip to either side to evade an opponent's punch as he threw his own. Charles used his technique to initiate attacks as well as to counter. And in those instances, his simultaneous head movement worked well to evade his opponent's punches as they tried to counter. And to take it one step further, Charles would use his split step and crouch to feint and draw an opponent's attack, then follow up on that with a counter. To summarize, Charles could catch opponents by short stopping, split stepping, drawing, or just straight up attacking. Basically, Charles could get you coming and going. He basically had total freedom of movement. The ability to counter or attack in any position, moving in any direction. And in my opinion, it's this attribute above all others that made Charles one of the greatest boxers to ever live. If you would like to learn some of these tactics, you can check out my books on footwork, defense, and power, linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.